Hey guys, so I can't find my phone stand, unfortunately, which means I'm going to have to hold my phone the entire time. Um, but I have the sink running a little bit because my family's home and I don't really like filming videos while they're home because it's, I'm not going to lie, I kind of have hid this whole like body dysmorphia YouTube thing from them. They have no idea about it and unfortunately they will never know about it. I don't like wasting water. They will definitely never know about it. So I've had people ask me like how does your family deal with you having body dysmorphia? And to be honest, they know about it. Um, I did tell my mom a few months ago that, you know, obviously I was diagnosed with it and things like that and that I was receiving treatment for it. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think she takes me very seriously when I say that I have it. I don't think that she knows what it even means to have body dysmorphia. Um, I'm just in the shower. I don't think that she truly like understands what it's like to struggle with uh, your body image and things like that because I'm not trying to be like lookist or anything. My mom is, was an attractive person like. Uh, when she was my age and I'm guessing so was my dad I've only seen a few pictures of him but I feel like in my family I am the only one who really is struggling with their body both of my sisters I have two sisters both of them are attractive both of them are um I guess what you would call, what internet people would call normies, I don't know what you would call them. Very normal um, compared to me who is the opposite of that. And I guess, unfortunately, because I am kind of like the black sheep of my family, I do get a lot of like, why can't you be more like your sister? Why can't you do this? Why can't you like, that kind of crap. So unfortunately, my family's not really that supportive when it comes to body dysmorphia stuff because they don't really understand it. And even if they did understand it, I don't know that they would really care. I don't know. I think a lot of people with body dysmorphia struggle to even tell their family because sometimes it can feel like an insult to your parents because you think you're ugly and then your parents are like oh you think you're ugly well you look like me so do you think I'm ugly you know kind of like a weird insult in some type of way when it's really not supposed to be taken like that because people with body dysmorphia I mean you can have it whether or not you're attractive or unattractive it just it literally just has to do with your brain chemistry and how you analyze things so weirdly, I, I haven't really explained everything like to my family about like why I have it and things like that. I'm guessing it's probably due to trauma, family trauma, <laughs> not gonna lie. But yeah, it's, it's not really easy living with, with an unsupportive family because they expect you to be able to do things that you know that you, sh you can't do, like look in the mirror, go out, do basic things, um, certain things that you need to do to function are just like incredibly difficult to do. I'm just sitting down. Um, but, yeah, it's just, it's like, I'm definitely a black sheep in my family. I always have been. Not only in hair color. You know what? Some people have said that they thought that I had black hair and I was confused because I thought.
thought it was really obvious that I have brown hair, but I think in the lighting, like the lighting in my videos, it looks like dark, dark. But it, to me, it's very obviously brown, very obviously brown, but I don't know. All I know is that for the most part, I have always been kind of like the black sheep of my family. And so it's like, I feel like, I don't know if you guys relate to this at all, but when you're the black sheep, all of your problems become non-issues. So let's say you're having issues with depression or something, your family won't be as accommodating to you uh, than if it were your sibling or like another family member that they like, like have as like the golden child or whatever. Um, I'm not trying to be like insulting to my sisters because I love them. It's just family and bias morphia don't really mix very well because people don't understand what it's like to wake up every day and actually want to die because of how you look and the fact that you can't change it, the fact that you, you have to live with it forever because this is your face and you can't change it. You don't have the money to change it. You don't have the, the you don't have the resources they don't understand they don't get it they're not and even if they they want to understand like unless you've lived through it unless you've lived through a body dysmorphia episode you won't understand you won't get it and i don't blame people for not understanding for thinking that it's just something yeah you know that we we do for attention we don't do this for attention we don't do this for attention we do this because we're sick if you have body dysmorphia you have a disorder you know you're obsessing over your looks something um it is related to ocd because you're obsessing over something it's like obsessive compulsive behavior but i think a lot of people just think of it as um Oh, you don't really like, you know, one thing about yourself and you're just like freaking out about it. No, man. Even if it was that, I mean, if I'm obsessing over something, that's still body dysmorphia. But yeah, I guess um, that's the video for today. I just wanted to talk about like my family and what it's like living with them and how it's just not really the best because it's, you know, just really difficult to live with people who don't understand and I guess who expect you to do certain things and to behave a certain way even though your brain is not letting you do that. <laughs> My brain doesn't let me look at certain things like mirrors. My brain doesn't when I see myself in the mirror, I look almost through myself now. I try not to focus on the mirror. I look past it. I look like my eyes are going in different directions. I'm like, I have trained myself to look away from mirrors. I have trained myself to immediately like snap my head away. <sighs> I remember the first time my mom got me wearing bandages she was like, what are you, what are you wearing? And I was like, uh, band-aids. She was like, what, did you hurt your nose? And I was like, no, I didn't hurt my nose. So sitting there explaining that to her was really interesting because she got a little bit angry. She got a little angry <laughs> that I thought I was so ugly that I had to wear band-aids on my nose. And instead of like listening to me, she just yelled at me and basically said I looked ridiculous and every time I go out with her anywhere, like it can be anywhere like public, it's always, you look ridiculous, people think you look weird, like Someone will make a comment, like, 
at my therapist's office. She told me to take my band-aids off. And I told her no. And my therapist said, that's all right, she can leave them on. My mom was like, you don't think she needs to take them off? Like, so you can see her face? My therapist was like, I don't, I don't need to if she's uncomfortable. People don't need to understand. I just wish that they would respect my choices. My choice to wear band-aids, my choice to not wear band-aids, my choice to get Botox, my choice to get fillers, my choice to change my face the way that I want, my face, my, my, my uh, choice to not change my face. I don't think it's that difficult to just try to care, but anyway, that's all for now. I guess that was just kind of more of a rant than more of like a... Yeah, um, I don't know, a body dysmorphia video, but I guess it, it was about my family, mostly, and um, what really kind of transpires when I talk about my body dysmorphia around them. So yeah, um, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Bye.